I'm going to hand over the next part of the evening to Ace Ruo at Creature Bionics and Target 3D, and we'll finish with an audience q and I'll see you at the bar for a drink or two. Ace. I, I have a question. Is this, it? Is this it? What you see on these screens now, is this the goal that we're all trying to achieve? I mean, me being me and you being you, but at the same time, we can become anyone or anything. Why is it that humans are so eager to escape this reality? I mean, this beautiful world that was given to us as a gift, you know, the womb moving through darkness, but we are bounded by her laws. Maybe it's just our curiosity. Maybe it is our desire to be free. Or maybe we have become so disconnected with nature that we wish to create a world where we no longer have to be bound by nature's laws, but not without the narrative of being in control of the experience of others. Hmm. Maybe I'm just overthinking. Maybe this is humanity's destiny. Hmm. Besides, I kind of love what I've become. The question is, will you love what you become? when the time comes. But I am tired. I'm tired of hiding behind these walls, behind these curtains. I just want to be free. Ah. That is more like it. And now, I see you as you now see me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> ah. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. So my name is Ace Ruel, and I am the director of Creature Bionics. And Creature Bionics is a character production company that, fa that focuses on creature and fantasy character performance. So what we do is we work with productions on helping them to get the best performance from their creatures and fantasy characters. So that could come from doing character dev, that could come from doing mocap, as you can see here with Target 3D, the beautiful team that set this whole rig up. And we bought our practical effects, which is what my company made, we our monster legs. And if you see my little tail, you know, we do a little wag right there. See my tail right there. And what we do is we try to, we think from the actor's perspective and how can we get the actor to be the most closest to the skeleton of their character? How can we help the actor to embody their character and at the same time provide better VFX reference and better mocap data? 
So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to come over there to the virtual production stage and what I'm going to do is give you a comparison of two videos. Same character that you see over there and you're going to see what I done as a performance when I had none of this on and a performance when I had it on. And we're just going to do generic stuff because in reality it's easy to do the fancy stuff but in the world of motion capture we want to see the generic stuff, how you walk your idols, your turns. These are the things that are most important, especially for video games. So, this mocap's gonna break, because once I leave the volume, it's over. So say goodbye to this live character. Bye, everybody, bye. Okay, let me take, take this off. And I'm going to walk over here. Cool. Yes, yes, yes. So, Hello everyone again, I'm now on the virtual production stage now, okay. So, what I'm going to show you in this video is basically what me and Target we were doing. It was just testing out how we can tell the difference between using the rigs and what's the importance and what's the benefits. And the reason why, like I said, it's all about how can we ensure that the actor delivers the best and most realistic performance which helps you as a director, helps the production. It gives actors something more realistic to perform to and respond to. Because I'm from the world of motion capture, of playing characters such as Legend of Tarzan playing the apes and the lions, or in the new Marvel Ant-Man playing some of the creatures, uh, Marvel Eternals, video games. But my focus was about how can I bring the most realistic performance? And so this is one side. These are one, some of the rigs that we have that are more of the ones that are up in the top end range, should we say. And it was the most complicated one to try to get to work. And then once we figured it out, and the team at Target, and as well as the team at Portsmouth that I've also worked with, they figured it out, and this is why we've been able to do it. So everything I'm going to show you right now is going to be no cleanup. So what do I mean by no cleanup for those that don't work in the industry? You would know, basically, when it comes to cleanup, it means when you take the motion capture data, you have somebody edit it to make it look nice and prim and clean for when you put it out. So we've done this raw. There might be a bit of clipping with their hands going through the legs because we were just trying to make it as realistic as possible. So the first thing that we're going to look at in the walk cycle is just a generic walk. And when I say generic walk, it means no character, side by side and just walking just like this. Simple walk, side by side. And I've done one with the legs, one without. So the one on the right, is with the legs and the one on the left is without. If you just pause that. So just looking at the video from here, you can see with the creature that I have, already from just having the digi legs and doing a normal walk, it already gives me a nice gap in between my legs. Because you think about it, when you want to become a creature character, there's a difference between me being like this and me being like this. And then when you add sound, <laughs> now if I go to that normal human body, it's not gonna have the same effect. <laughs> you understand? So you have to also understand that the physicality is very important as well as the sound. So I'm gonna keep playing it, and so you can see from different angles. Even from the, oh, you see my, my little beautiful tail just swagging there and everything, yes, I like it. And even with having a tail, it gives me, it makes me know that there's something there, that there's something behind me. All right? So this is just walking from the, the different, and here's the side. And you can see the distance that I get from walking normally. There was no exaggeration in steps. I don't need to do that. Pause it right here, please. So now this next video is where I'm now in character. So the character means that I try to mimic or come up with an idea or a physicality that matches the creature. And all I did was put myself in a position where my hands were out, legs were bent. Now, without the leg extensions, I was on my toes. Because as you can see, most monsters, those that work in the industry, most monsters or fantasy characters seem to have digi legs, meaning they have a reverse knee. So for me as an actor, yes, I know that you can retarget my normal walk onto the character, but if I want to be able to embody the character even more, I'm going to try deep, dig deep to get that physicality. So here we're going to do it. Now we're going to have both. The same thing, we can play it now and have both walks.
and we're going to pause it right there. So when you're looking at the walks, and this character is very tall, now the benefits of having something like this means I am able to embody more into a character and I'm also to provide weight to the mocap. Because if you play the video, keep playing the video, and you look on the left side, you can see the weight is not exactly the same. And I have to more exaggerate it when I have no legs. And bear in mind, I'm on the tip of my toes, so that can only last for a certain amount of minutes before it starts to burn off my calves. And then you can see it again, the distance that I get when I'm walking. And these are the things and reasons why I believe that these type of things mixed with VFX, mixed with motion capture and practical effects, and merging the two, rather than living in one side or the other side, can bring the best performance. Now, before I leave the stage, I want to do, I want to know if there's somebody in the crowd that would like to do a little test, all right? And when I say a little test, because there is a way for us to engage in a physical performance where we can connect to creature and influence the audience to believe that what they are seeing is something different. Because the two main important aspects of playing a creature character that is different from human is one, the breath and the sound. The breath, the sound, and the weight, should I say. They're the most three important things that separate when you're playing a creature character compared to a human character. When you play something like a lawyer or a doctor, you don't think about my breath. Okay, how am I breathing? What type of breath am I having? Okay, how heavy am I? But when you're a creature character, and when you're playing fantasy, you have to know the sound and the breath. Because like I said, if I just do this, it has nothing. But if I breathe, and add sound, there's a difference. All right? So I want to know, is there anybody brave from the audience? Anybody brave from the audience? Yeah? Yeah? Here to come. Come. Come through. You can come as well. Both of you. Both. All right. So here, we have an actor. All right? And here we have somebody that's not an actor. Now, no, but let me tell you why it doesn't really matter. Because when it comes to acting as creature characters and fantasy characters, it's still subjective. It's very subjective because they're made up. No one can tell you that this is the right way to act like a zombie. Because, we, well, you know, we don't have any zombies yet, but you know what I mean. All right? But when it comes to creature and fantasy characters, if you are willing to give yourself to becoming this character, to being it, to using your senses and forgetting about thinking, oh my God, this is who I am, people are watching me. No, because I have to try and influence the audience to believe that the sound and the physicality that I'm having is real. So we're just going to do two things. So you going to give me your all? 100%. Are you ready to give your all? I'll give it a go. Okay. <laughs> so we're just going to do one, two, three basic things. First, we're going to have a physicality. And all you're going to do is have your left foot forward just a little bit more, yeah? and turn a bit to the angle, just a little bit to the side, and you're gonna bend down just a little bit and have your hands like this, all right? And all you're gonna do is first, you're gonna create, know your character's breath. So your character's breath is gonna be quick, it's gonna be And you see, when you do it, can you see how naturally, can naturally they go up and down? Now, all we're gonna do is add a sound. And the sound could be anything you feel. It can be, it can be anything you feel. All right? So close your eyes. When you open your eyes, you will become your character, your creature. You must remain in it. You must be in it. You must feel and see that everybody that is out there is food. <laughs> They're in your space. This is your food. So when I pat you on your back, what you're going to do is stay in your physicality. You're going to breathe and make your sound. In three, two, one, go. <laughs> and stop. <laughs> And no, this wasn't like 
chosen before selected with this guy here, <laughs> I'm telling you, yeah? And this is what I'm saying. It's all about you being within the character and giving yourself to it. Yes, when it comes to video games and certain things, there's certain logistics that you need to know and understand when it comes to mechanics, especially in video games. But when it comes to just being, it's all about you just accepting that this is what it is, forgetting the opinion, forgetting what you are, and just becoming. Guys, thank you. Thank you very I appreciate much. it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> so guys, I just wanted to say thank you and definitely give a big thanks to Target 3D because without them, it was not possible. So please make some noise for Target 3D. And guys, I hope you enjoyed what I had to say and I'll see you guys after when we get drunk. Yeah. <laughs> thank you.